Hello and good morning and welcome to this week. Rosanna, good morning. Great to have you. How's it going out there in good LA? Morning. It's a little early to tell, but it's <laughs> okay. too soon to tell. Yeah. I, uh, Scott, I think that's what um, Ho Chi Minh, it was either, either Ho Chi Minh or one of the Chinese leaders, maybe it was Joe and Lai. He was asked, what do you think about the significance of the French Revolution in world history? <laughs> Dryly was too soon to tell. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> How are you? Out there in Western well, New York. Where are uh, you, Lil? Beautiful sunny day. Uh, hoping to maybe go out camping if I can find a place that is not uh, crowded with other people. And okay. Wonderful. It's rainy and, and wet, humid in, in the city here in New York. Uh, but our, I was about to say, our powder is dry. <laughs> but that's a kind of militaristic kind of thing, you know. Uh, but you understand the point that I'm trying to make. Well, it's been one hell of a week. Uh, so let's, let's jump into it. Um, first of all, I, I read a headline yesterday that the governor of Georgia is suing the um, mayor of Atlanta because she wants the city to mandate masks. Rosanna, are these people lost their minds or what? I mean, I, I don't get it. Do you? Uh, I don't get it either. I just think it just shows the American people who is really humane and who is not. I don't understand how you can uh, tell people not to protect themselves. And to go as far as to suing people, it's ridiculous. Unethical. Yeah. It's, it's self-destructive. It's, it's destructive to, to the working class and, and the entire people. And it's even you know, self-destructive in the, in the sort of logic of, of capital. Like it, it, it's not good for anybody. For Except anybody. For people who are trying to, you know, um, grab the power to to unilaterally and, and brutally force people back to work and, and you know uh, whatever conditions exist. This is it's part of the push toward fascism, I think. And and now mass wearing, they say it's a cultural war. If you wear a mask, you're progressive, or left, or centrist, or liberal. And if you you're in favor of socialism, and if you don't wear a mask, you're uh, a free thinker and a free doer and a uh, America first kind of uh, make America great again kind of. Uh, and I saw a picture, there were a lot of images this week that just drove me kind of batty. One was, uh, and I think it was Utah, Rosanna, there were a group of people sitting around having, uh, and it was a big group, having a debate about wearing masks. We're not going to wear a mask. And there was one woman. Did you see that picture? You no, I, uh, and and uh, and then there was another one of uh, another image that made me really uh, angry, and that was a uh, Mr. Stone sitting around with the with the Proud Boys uh, after Trump uh, gave him clemency, making the fascist probably, sign. Uh, Did yeah. you see that? Yep. Yeah. No, yeah, I haven't. He played the Proud Boys as his, as his uh, security detail for an appearance. Openly fascist, openly fascist. And then there was another thing that happened this week. Uh, the economic advisor to Trump made an outright, direct, ugly, vicious attack on Dr. What's his name? Fauci, mm -hmm. saying yeah. everything that Dr. Fauci ever said was wrong. I mean, this attack on science uh, is yeah, just. But how uh, can they even? How how can they even say something like that when you're seeing the the pandemic? You can see the numbers just keep skyrocketing, just going up, up, and up, and more and more people are experiencing this illness. Uh, more and more people are starting to have, uh, you know, people that they know have been uh, affected. Uh, I don't see how they can, you know, say that he lied. It's just, uh, they just make up shit. Excuse yeah, my language. Well, you know? I, wanna, I wanna get back to this question of like the, the cultural divide between masks and non-masks. I'm, I'm uh -huh. not sure it's right. Like I live in a very small, uh, very conservative, overwhelmingly conservative rural town. 
Um, most people are wearing masks and they're not, you know, they're not putting up a fuss about it. Um, I think there's a, there's a very small minority of, of people who are, um, you know, just honestly sick and, and rotten human beings who, who get off on, um, you know, on doing things, on showing that they can endanger others and put themselves in danger. Um, rather than, you know, I, 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 so I don't think, I think the majority of the American people recognize the seriousness of this and, and, and are, are participating um, despite the inconveniences and, and, you know, that sacrifice that they're making is being betrayed by, you know, th this tiny minority, um, including, you know, the, the core of the Republican Party. So you're saying it's a political divide, not a cultural divide? A no? political and ethical divide, yes. Hmm. Well, maybe, maybe. I mean, um, to me, it's a little bit of both, you know, but anyway, there was another image that kind of, you know, made me angry. And that was one of uh, Mr. Trump sitting at the Resolute desk, Rosanna, with Goya products, uh, oh. you know, Goya, and then his daughter, Ivanka, holding up, you know, uh, a little can of Goya, uh, you know. And so I think what happened was that the uh, the CEO of Goya came out with some pro-Trump and yeah, that is he, a boycott, right? He said he, you know, that he supported Trump, he loved Trump, Trump was his best friend, all of these kinds of things. And immediately after that, people started throwing their uh, Goya products away. You could see it all over social media, mm. uh, you know. But it, it's it's a little concerning because it, it it points to Trump trying to um, get gain some support among the Latinos. Uh, you know, he had the uh, president of Mexico there, which was very controversial mm. it, within and without within Mexico and outside of Mexico. Even the trip itself, um, you know, there was a lot of speculation as to why this was happening <clears throat> and why. Um, there was all this, you know, chummy chummy stuff going on, uh, but it's it's you know he's Trump's going to try all kinds of desperate measures. I I just in passing there was some type of uh, soundbite that he was going to uh, give citizenship to dreamers or uh, provide a citizen a path to uh, citizenship to dreamers, and so uh, these are all just you know kind of attempts to to gain the, popular, the the voters because the Latino vote is emerging and it's, uh, you know, it's, 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 it can be, um, it, it can determine the, the elections. And so he knows that and he's, he's losing so much in the polls. You know, people are not, no longer, they're, they're no longer being fooled by all of this rhetoric. You know, no doubt about it. He's going down, down, down in the polls. Down, mm -hmm. down, down in the polls. And Scott, your homeboy, your neighbor, Mr. Biden, uh, seems to be going up, up, up. You must be happy about that. Oh, huh? for sure. You, you know, you know me and Biden were like this. We have beers <laughs> together every Friday night. Um, you, know, I, you know, Biden is. Um, I mean, the question for me has always been. You know, the, what defines this moment is the clash between the fascist threat and this incredible, powerful democratic movement that's that's mm. coming together. Um, and, and the question around Biden is, you know, to what degree uh, will he step into sort of the role um, that is needed uh, in that movement? And it looks like, you know, there, there is some progress in that direction. Um, the, the very ambitious uh, uh, climate plan. Um, but again, it, what, what defines the, the sort of terrain of struggle and the demands and, and what we can do is, you know, is these movements and not, you know. What I was just about to ask you is the issue whether or not he steps into it 
or whether or not his administration is pushed into it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, exactly. You know, I mean, that, that seems to me to be, uh, because he's going to be pushed, his administration uh, is going to be pushed from a number of different angles, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. That's the nature of politics and economics uh, uh, today. I want to ask a question, though, if I might. Biden gave a speech on the economy last week, a week ago, Thursday, I think. And one of the things that he talked about was uh, infrastructure, jobs, unemployment, the COVID crisis. And this week, no, two weeks from now, on the 31st, Rosanna, the $600 uh, uh, payment is going to run out. Unemployment compensation for a whole lot of people is going to run out. Um, rents are going to, uh, 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 the moratorium is going to expire. Um, oh my God, what are we going to do about it? It's a, it's a, I'm sure in Los Angeles, it must be a, given this upsurge in the COVID crisis and everything in California, a lot of people must be worried, no? Uh, yeah, definitely. Definitely, you know, uh, you know, with, in the Poor People's Campaign, the moral budget that was put out, um, it was estimated that 140 million people were either already in, living in poverty or only one emergency away from poverty. Mm. That's 140 million people. Mm. And so that emergency has happened. So we are, and, and that emergency, uh, it was estimated that it would be only a four hundred dollars away from it, so that you know that emergency has happened and it's here, and definitely you know as we begin to see if there is no other kind of relief, we'll begin to see uh, evictions, even though there is a moratorium here, but uh, some landlords are not honoring that. That's happening. Uh, there was a. Uh, furniture lay put out in front uh, right here on our corner and I wondered whether somebody had just been evicted from the apartment buildings next door to us. Wow. Uh, it's very concerning, very concerning. I feel the, the tension uh, of, you know, wondering what, uh, you know, what's going to happen and how, how can we help, you know, mostly. Um, I saw something That's a big question. big question. Yeah. Go ahead, Scott. That's the big question. Like 32% of, I think it was 32% of renters um, already couldn't make their, their full July rent payment, um, at, you know, let alone uh, after benefits expire. So we're, I mean, I don't think it's impossible to, I don't think it's possible to, um, you know, overemphasize how dire the situation is. Like, we are going to be looking at levels of of homelessness and hunger um, and, and desperation that we haven't seen since the Great Depression, um, concentrated um, in, in black and brown communities as usual. I, I think it, estimate, go on, Rosanna. I, I think it's important to point out that there is a solution. You know, uh, there is a solution. And, and again, uh, the Poor People's Campaign, the moral budget, uh, points to that, to those solutions. They talking about the cut in the military budget that will, will also uh, keep us more secure. They're talking about taxing the rich, that the, you know, the wealthy need to pay their fair share. And, and that in creating a, a livable wage, it in fact will increase uh, revenue for the country. Uh, so those are like the three main things, but so there is a solution which we have to get behind and, uh, and fight for. Well, that's one of the things that uh, I'm glad you raised that point because in our national board meeting uh, the other night, uh, we had a discussion about uh, the unemployment crisis and the HEROES Act uh, and the, the need to pass it. And by the way, I think it's going to be passed. I think it's going to be the Senate is going to pass it. That's my estimate of the balance of forces in the country. Uh, I think that the initiative now, in, uh, the political momentum <clears throat> is on the side of democracy. 
The uprising is taking place. There's a tremendous amount of activism. And I think the Republicans are on the defensive. You know what I'm saying? Trump has made so many mistakes over the last several weeks from, you know, his statements, his racist statements. And by the way, you know, his niece was on uh, uh, on uh, the Rachel Maddow show last night talking about mm -hmm. how he heard, she heard him make racist statements, anti-Semitic statements. Not that that surprises anybody, but I sure wish they had that tape uh, where they, where he was on the, what was the name of that show that he had where he was um, uh, The Apprentice. The Apprentice. They had outtakes of him making, somebody has it, they need to release it. But anyway, um, you gotta do a petition, you know, release them goddamn, then I go cussing again early in the morning, <laughs> release those tapes. Um, but what was the point that I was trying to make? That, um, I, I forgot it. Anyway, whenever I think about Trump, my mind just goes, you know, all to. Uh, well, I think what, you were, what you were huh? heading for was the idea that, um, you know, there, there, there is this Heroes Act and it's an immediate um, thing that, that will stave on, will, will mitigate this, this crisis. And it's a question for right now. Um, you know, we can talk about the the, the, the longer term needs and, and the need for a transition to socialism. But right now, there well, is- Well, that was the point I was wanted to make because some people were saying, well, yeah, we need to pass the HEROES Act, but we also need to deal with the long-term crisis of unemployment. And I was like, wait a minute, 20 million people are unemployed right now. You know, uh, X number of million lost their health care because they had union jobs and now they ain't got no jobs whatsoever. And X million of people are gonna be evicted from their homes. And in order to address Rosanna, those uh, uh, solutions that the poor people campaign is putting forward. And this is something that the Democrats have not yet dealt with. You're gonna need big public <clears throat> spending intervention in the economy, public works jobs like the worker WPA during the 1930s or the Green New Deal uh, today. It's gonna take um, um, the, the government, the state uh, is gonna have to intervene big time in the economy uh, in order to cut the military budget, defund the police, yes, and use that money to solve people's economic and social problems. Right. And so this idea about <clears throat> long-term solutions, well, <clears throat> those solutions will be determined by the short-term crisis that we're dealing with now. And socialism is not gonna be big, no abstraction. It's gonna be a rise out of the struggle around the day-to-day -day living problems that people have in this moment, right now. Am I wrong about that, y'all? Nope, I think you're, very, you're on track. Yeah, definitely. I think it, you know, it has to, it has to take the form of immediate needs and, and work. And I think that the American people, once they know that there is a solution out there, an immediate solution, they can get rally around and, and, and hit the streets and hit the phones all of those things that, that pressure uh, the legislators to, to take action and, and, and work in that direction. And, and we should also point out that, that, you know, we have the tendency to think of unemployment as this, you know, horrifying uh, economic problem, but it's really, it wasn't, it, it's not. The problem is that workers are being made to bear the cost of unemployment. So, Unemployment is something that allows flexibility in an economy. It allows uh, adaptation to the to a crisis like we're in now. The problem is that unemployment in in our country and capitalism uh, means you know the worker is thrown out. The worker has to bear the cost of that um, adaptation, that flexibility in a crisis. Um, so uh, you know the, the it's a I think it's a completely normal thing that, you know, the, the, the capitalist class who, who organize and benefit from the economy as a whole should be the ones 
funding, you know, the, the life needs of the people who are out of work. Uh, it's one class is flexibility as another class is getting their butts whooped. And that's kind of what you're saying yeah. to me. You know, I come from Youngstown, Ohio, and there are four or five generations of, of workers who haven't had jobs, never, never worked, you know, because when the steel industry collapsed, everything collapsed with it. Now, just last year, General Motors out of Lordstown, gone, you know, and so the last uh, uh, lifeline uh, of people is just not there. So we, we have no, yeah, it's flexibility for business, but for the working class, it's a kick in the teeth. Uh, and, uh, but the main thing that, that we need to do, uh, uh, given the economic inflexibility that we're placed under is to flex our fingers on our keyboards and on our phones um, and where we're able to get out there in the street and demand that McConnell and the Republicans uh, pass the HEROES Act. It's the main issue, it seems to me, for the next couple of weeks, you know? And if you go to our website at cpusa.org, you'll, you'll see a place to, to click on a petition and uh, call your senator, even if you don't see it on our website, you know who your senators are, call them cats and demand that they, and, and you know, I, to me, it's like time to have sit-ins and, uh, you know, occupations and all those kinds of things. I read the other day in Kentucky, hundreds of people sitting outside the unemployment office all day and all night you know, trying to get their checks. And this is happening in several states around the country. People are angry. Yeah. So and, show and, it. And that, What do you got to lose? You know, I think a lot of the, the time, so, you know, people, uh, leftists in particular, think of um, action sort of within uh, the parliamentary and electoral sphere as somehow, you know, lesser, right, than, than other forms. So that, you know, Passing the Heroes Act is just like a, a band aid, you know, to the the big problem that, you know, kind of what you were talking about before, Joe. But but I think you're right. You know, this is a time when we're seeing that militant action, occupations, sit-ins, uh, protests um, uh, are necessary to achieve even basic democratic protections. Um, so it's not just you know calling calling your senators is a start. Um, but if there are, are movements um, in your area doing um, uh, other forms of, of action as well, um, get involved. Well, there's the, the, the strike for Black Lives Matter happening this Monday. That's, That's right. a really important. Or Wednesday. Uh, it's Monday, this okay. coming Monday. 20th. Right. Yeah, the 20th. It's the 20th. Yeah. It's the 20th. And, and uh, uh, there's projections right. that it might even go globally. Cool action, and I know That's here in Los Angeles, need. it's supposed to be pretty big. That's what we need. Yeah. That's what we need. And the Longshore Union out in California, I'm sure, is is behind it. They struck on Juneteenth mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. on the East and West Coast, and and that's what we need. You know, I'll leave you with this: four percent. The United States has four percent of uh, the world's population. 24% of the world's COVID cases because of this incompetence, this, this uh, atrocious, reactionary, cold-blooded uh, ruling class, right-wing uh, policy on the part of Trump and his uh, cronies. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's way past the line. And uh, we, gotta, we gotta bring it to the stop, a stop in every way possible. And so there's a way station on Monday, strike for black lives. Then there's that vote in the uh, Senate and another week or two on, on uh, the HEROES Act and uh, keep the pressure on y'all. That, that's, that's the right. main thing. Rosanna, thanks for joining us this morning. Scott, have a great weekend. Mm -hmm. We're having a, a, a memorial for Richie Hoyan on Sunday. Uh, I think we're gonna stream it live on Facebook. 
He was a comrade who passed from COVID just a, a, a few weeks ago. We've had too many of those as yeah. well. Take care, stay strong, All stay right. healthy, stay, stay safe, physically distant, but socially close. Bye. 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 Have a good day, comrades. Yep. Same to you.